What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Wiz, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be explaining how you can use ND filters as well as step up rings to record better footage when you're outside. And just to let you know all the gear that I am using in this video, as well as the variable ND filter that I'm gonna be referencing and the step up rings can be found in the description, links are below. So first and foremost, an ND filter is pretty much a neutral density filter, which is meant to pretty much cut down the brightness when you're outside. So essentially, an ND filter is like sunglasses for your lens, check it out, boom. Now this one I have in my hand is actually the Tiffin variable ND filter. It goes from two to eight stops, meaning that right now it's at its minimum and if you spin it, it can get darker and darker. So why would you need something like this? Pretty much sometimes when you're recording outside, it's sunshine, sometimes it's cloudy, overcast. When it's very, very bright outside, it can sometimes throw off your camera's exposure. And when you're recording video, you have to record in a proper frame rate to have the proper movement in your video. So as you know, the frame rates are 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, 120 frames per second. And the rule of thumb when it comes to frame rate in reference to your shutter speed when you're setting up your camera settings is if you're recording at say 24 frames a second or whatever frame rate you're recording at your shutter speed should always be double so my camera I don't have 48 uh, for shutter speed I have 50 so right now I'm at 24 frames per second and I'm recording at uh, 50 shutter speed if I was recording at 30 frames I should be at a 60 um, shutter speed if I was recording at 60 frames I should be at an 120 shutter speed so if you know how to properly set a camera settings you would know that if you're outside and it's very very bright especially if you're using a good aperture lens like I'm using this 24 millimeter 2.8 if I was to have it at 2.8 at like say an ISO 100 which is the lowest ISO I can go at um, 50 frames a second to coincide with my 24 frames a second, I will find that my image would be completely blown out. It will be way too bright. Now, I could, if I wanted the exposure to be right, I can bump my shutter speed up to whatever was appropriate for however the sun is casting. I can go to 250, 500, I can go to 1000. But what I would find is that the movement of my video, it wouldn't be natural. It will be real jittery and just artificial looking. So I'm gonna go out Side and just give you an example because it's nice and sunny outside right now. I'm gonna go outside and give you an example of what I would have to do to get the proper exposure without using the variable ND and you're gonna see that my exposure is gonna be totally off. Then I'm gonna put on the ND filter onto my lens just so you see how it works. Now before I actually go outside, I wanna briefly just explain to you what these step up rings are used for. So as you see, I have my Canon 50 millimeter right here in my hand. And if you look at the top of the lens, you'll see that it indicates right here that this lens has a 49 millimeter diameter. This is an 82 millimeter diameter ND filter, so obviously this just, it doesn't fit. It, you know, it doesn't fit. There's no way I can get this on here just by using these tools. So that's why you should invest in some good step up rings. So with these, as you see, it starts off at 49 millimeters, 49 to about 52. Then you got the 52 to the 55, the 55 to the 58, pretty much all the way to this one right here, which is the 77 to 82. So sometimes it sucks if you're using something like that that has a 49 millimeter diameter because you got to use all of your rings, but this goes on here just that simple. And it goes on to your lens just as simple so most well, all step up rings i've ever came across they're universal with every camera lens and every nd filter so you should have no problem connecting it looks a little obnoxious but it gets the job done when recording outside all right so with all the nerd talk out of the way let's go ahead and go outside and see exactly how this ND filter works. All right, people, I'm currently outside, and as you can see, my image is completely blown out. I'm at 24 frames per second. My shutter speed is 50 at a 4.5 aperture. My ISO is the lowest that it can be, 100. And as you can see, the shutter speed is correct for the frame rate that I'm filming at, but my image is completely blown out. Now, I could bump the shutter speed up to get my exposure right about there 
shutter speed is 500, but you probably can't really see it because I'm on a 10 to 18, my lens is stabilized, but the movement will be real jittery, especially if I was like recording any type of fast movement. It's not like that natural movement that your eyes used to seeing. So I'm gonna take it back down to 20, I'm sorry, back to 50 shutter speed, and I'm gonna put the ND filter on there and show you how it's supposed to look. All right, so now I have my Tiffin variable ND filter on the camera, and as you can see, my exposure is quite perfect. I'm still at 100 ISO, 50 shutter speed. It's at a 5.0 aperture now, and um, yeah, everything looks good. And I really didn't speak too much about uh, what actually a stop is, because I'm assuming you might know, but if you don't know, this variable ND goes from two stops to eight stops, so if the sun happened to get brighter or get darker, I can easily just adjust this where I can make it darker, I can make it lighter, and this one in particular, this Tiffin 82 millimeter one, goes from two to eight stops, so I'm not gonna really get into the explanation of stops of light, but um, just like 100 ISO, which I'm at, if I was to go up to 200 ISO, that's one stop. 200 to 400, that's another stop. So when you're dealing with aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, whenever you double whatever number you're at, that's the stop of light. So just like when I adjusted the shutter speed uh, without the filter on to get my background and my exposure looking good, I went from 50 to about, I think it was 500. So that's about three to four stops of light. And that's the reason why me putting this variable ND filter on and going to three stops is making the exposure proper. So the last thing I want to show you is pretty much how the movement would look if you were to adjust your shutter speed in camera up to that 500 just to get the exposure right. I want to show you how jittery the footage and the movement would look compared to using the ND filter to get the exposure correct. All right, so right now I'm in 24 frames a second, 500 shutter speed. As you see, my exposure is perfect, and you can already see the movement. I'm at a five aperture and 100 ISO. I'm gonna have my wife back here do some jumping jacks just so you can see how the fast movement looks when you have to bump up your shutter speed this high. Go ahead, bud. See how jittery that looks? Look around her arms. It just doesn't look fast. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the ND filter back on and take my uh, shutter speed back down to 50 so you can see that natural movement. All right, now I'm back down to a 50 shutter speed, still at 5.0 aperture, 100 ISO. I got the ND filter on 24 frames a second. I hope my camera doesn't fall. I'm gonna go ahead and let her do some jumping jacks now so you can see how smooth the movement is. Go ahead, babe. Natural movement, see? No jitters, no critters. That's why you need to buy an ND filter if you wanna record outside. Alrighty, so I really hope you guys were able to grasp and understand that example. And I don't think I mentioned it, by the way, these step up rings that I have right here, they're by K and F Concept. I think I got them off of Amazon for about maybe 15 to $20, somewhere in that range. Um, and this right here is the Tiffin 82 millimeter variable ND, like I said. Now this normally costs about 99 bucks, so like about 119, but I actually lucked up and got it off of OfferUp for drum roll. $40. So like I stated earlier in this video, if you are interested in purchasing either the step-up rings or the variable NDs, the link to these are in the description below. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope that you found some value in it. If you did, if you could just take a moment just to smash that like button for me, I would really appreciate it. And if you like the vibes that I'm giving off, go ahead and join the crew, subscribe to the channel. I post all type of videos about fitness, and making videos and cameras, so on and so forth. And with that being said, I'm gonna catch you guys in my next video. Peace out. Oh God, don't drop Turn me. On me. Okay. Do not drop me. Oh God, don't drop me. <clears throat> oh God, don't drop me. Don't drop me. <sighs> Jesus. Don't drop me. I don't see the death. Oh my God. Stop! Okay. Don't drop me. Don't drop me. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm not playing. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs>